So if you're a dividend investor and you are looking for passive income, then you have to look at the utilities sector. So specifically in this one, I want to talk about the Canadian utility sector and some of the big dividend paying stocks that you can find there. So there's a lot of reasons for this. You really need to understand that stocks in here pay really good dividends. We're talking north of 5%. You also need to understand that they're all about dividend growth. Not only do they have a high payout, they're also capable of increasing that payout year after year, sometimes in the double digits. And finally, these stocks outperform during market crashes. So they're absolutely fantastic insurance against the inevitable bear market that rolls around when you least expect it. Now I know this sector is mind-numbingly boring, but I think the amount of dividend income that you can get there and the amount of growth you can get is really surprising. In fact, this sector has actually beaten the Canadian market overall for the last two decades. And I'd like to show you some of that data. So the tool I'm going to use to dig into this is something that you've probably seen in some of my other videos. It's called Portfolio 123. It has lots and lots of different tools and capabilities. It'll allow you to screen stocks. It will allow you to back test your investing and trading ideas, and it will show you you some really impressive views that get into the fundamental numbers underlying a lot of these stocks. Okay, so let's take a look at this screen that I've set up for the Canadian utility sector, and you can see it's very simple. There's a rule here that is looking for a yield greater than 2%, and I'm only concerned with stocks in the utility sector. I have another rule here that's looking for dividend growth, but I'm going to leave it disabled for a moment. And so before we get into the specific stocks, I want to look at the utility sector as a whole and we can see how it has actually performed over the last uh, couple of decades. And uh, that's something that Portfolio 123 can do for us. It has a backtest tool that will allow you to go back and look at the overall performance of stocks, sectors, or industries over a specific time frame. So if we do that here, if we go over to the backtest tool, we can say that we want to run a backtest, and I'm going to set it for a 20-year period. So I'm going to go back to 2000. So this will run it on exactly two decades worth of data and it will buy all of the stocks that pop up on this screen and it will just evenly allocate all of the money across all that stocks. So this is a way basically to backtest all of the stocks in a given sector at one time. So we can go over here and run that backtest. And so then we can see the results. Now, what this is telling us is that over the last 20 years, the utility sector, if we just simply went out and bought every single stock in the utility sector in Canada and balanced our money evenly across all of them, that we would have made an annualized rate of return of 13.46%. So that includes price appreciation and it includes dividend income. Now compare that to what the overall broad market did in the same time frame, uh, the TSX, including dividends, and price appreciation has only returned 6.47%. And so you can see that outperformance here on the chart. Right from day one back in 2000, our portfolio here was outperforming the broad market. You can see here it didn't dip as badly in uh, 2008 during the financial crisis as the market did. And from there, the outperformance has continued. And even to this day, the recovery since the crash in March has been enormously impressive in the utility sector. And you can see the power of the defensive nature of utility stocks too here in the drawdown. What this tells us is that the broad market experienced a really bad dip at one point where it lost 48% of its value. I know for a fact that was in 2008. And in the same time frame, our broad selection of Canadian utility stocks only was drawn down by 30%. So that's really wh why people buy these uh, defensive stocks, right? You're looking for that downside protection when things go bad. And in 2008, Canadian utilities absolutely delivered on that. Now, that said, let's go back and take a look at our overall screen. So what sort of companies are actually showing up if we run the screen? So these are the companies today that we would buy in this particular screen. But remember, uh, the exact list would have changed over the last couple of decades as companies would come and go in that particular sector. Uh, we would have just bought the ones off the day and then rebalanced into different ones. But today, this is what the screen is actually showing us. Uh, and you can see some very familiar names here if you've ever looked into the Canadian utility sector. Uh, I can see a few of my favorites in this list. So this is showing us some stats that are quite interesting to any dividend investor. This column is showing us the rate of change of the dividend for each company uh, in the current year, over the last three years, and over the last five years. So these three numbers together give us a sense of the overall long-term dividend growth that these companies have delivered for investors 
while this column over here is telling us what the current yield is. So basically this means that I'm getting paid 4.54% today to hold the stock and whatever I make in dividend income has been growing over the last few years. Now we know that a company with a strong track record of dividend growth in the past is quite likely to continue that dividend growth policy into the future because they know that's the value they deliver to shareholders. People buy these stocks, especially utility stocks, looking for not only a high dividend yield, but they're also interested in dividend growth. It's very, very appropriate for people that are looking for that passive dividend income. Now, that said, let's see if we can do a little bit better because our screening criteria is very broad. We're just looking for basically any old utility stock that pays a dividend. So if we tighten up our criteria a little bit and we look for positive growth in both an annual, a three-year, and a five-year time frame, we're only going to get those companies that have actually experienced a very consistent track record of strong dividend growth. So if we go ahead and run the screen on that criteria, we get a smaller list of nine stocks to focus in on. So at this point, you can then sort of really home in on each individual company and do your own sort of higher level analysis to figure out which ones are the best fit for your particular portfolio. So at this level, I like to take a closer look at some of the dividend growth and yield numbers and try to find one that has a nice balance. Now, in fact, that's what this rank column is showing us. Um, ranking in Portfolio 123 allows you to sort stocks according to weighted criteria. So the ranking system that I have set up for this particular screen is ranking stocks on a balance of high dividend yield and high dividend growth. So it's not enough just to have one or the other, I'm looking for both. So I'm looking for the top stocks that have a nice healthy mix of each. And that's what's being delivered here in this particular list because the top ranked stock is Atco. And you can see right here, it has some nice solid numbers on dividend growth, and it has quite a healthy yield. Versus down in the bottom here, the lowest ranked stock has a fairly weak history of dividend growth and also a fairly low dividend yield. I think this is the mistake that a lot of investors uh, will sometimes make is not understanding the difference between current yield and what that yield is going to be in the future. Uh, money today is fantastic, but you also want to know that that uh, income is going to keep increasing into the future. First, because of inflation. You don't want inflation to eat away at your dividend income. That's really, really important. And also because it means that that will drive appreciation in the share price. So if that dividend keeps on increasing and going up, the price is inevitably going to go up with it and you can recognize some nice capital gains along with your dividend income. There are a lot of companies out there that pay a super high dividend, but if it never grows and if it always stays the same, 10 years from now, that, that income stream is not going to be worth nearly as much as it is today. So that said, I think any of these companies are good. And in fact, let's just go and uh, validate that. So we can do a back test with this smaller list of stocks as well with this tighter criteria. And we can say, what would happen if we bought uh, this more select list of stocks? We'll do a quick back test here. And you can see that the returns are actually just a little bit better. We're up to 14.57% and the drawdown was similar. So even screening for that level of dividend income hasn't really hurt our returns. In fact, it's enhanced them just a little bit, uh, which shows us that this tighter criteria is still really good in terms of selecting good paying dividend stocks in that utility sector. So I'm gonna flip back here and we'll take a closer look at the companies that are showing up here. And I wanna call attention to a couple. So um, I actually own these two in my portfolio. I own Canadian Utilities and I own Capital Power. Um, you know, I like Canadian Utilities just for the sheer size. They're absolutely massive. I think the reliability is fantastic. They're really, really good. Um, you know, I think it's fair to compare them to the other massive company out there, which is Fortis. And you'll notice that Fortis is further down the ranking list here. Uh, Fortis appears down here with, a, you know, a, a middle of the road dividend increase history and a yield today of 3.81%, right? So if you compare that to the top ranked stock, which has stronger growth and a stronger yield, you can see why I'm looking higher in this list than down lower with a company like Fortis. So that said, why is Fortis lower in the list? Well, people are buying a premium stock when they buy Fortis. It has a 46 year track record of dividend increases. The company is rock solid. It's well managed. It's in a legal monopoly. It can't be challenged. It is basically like buying a bond. But 
you know, in terms of buying that stability, you have to accept a lower rate of return and a lower rate of dividend growth go forward. So if you're an extremely conservative investor and if you demand the absolute highest level of safety that you can possibly get while still getting some income, then a company like Ford is, is a fantastic choice. But if you're going into the utility sector and you're willing to accept just a little bit of risk, if you're willing to be just a little bit more aggressive, then you're going to want something a little bit higher in this list. Fortis might be a little bit too boring and a little bit too conservative for you. So personally, that's why I'm invested in Capital Power and Canadian Utilities. Uh, you know, like I say, Canadian Utilities is massive and very stable, but they also pull in some nice numbers in terms of dividend growth and current yield. Capital Power is smaller, but they still have uh, you know, some very impressive numbers on growth and they're currently paying a fairly high yield. And in fact, it's been higher, which tells me that there's still room for price appreciation in Capital Power. So let's take a look at this guy just because he's probably my favorite in this list. I really like this company. You know, they're a $3.8 billion company paying 5.86%. They have, um, you know, there's those dividend growth numbers and you can see some of the EPS growth uh, and sales growth over the last little while has been really phenomenal. They've have uh, or they've demonstrated a really proven ability to diversify and expand throughout North America, um, and not only uh, expanding geographically, but also expanding by different types of energy generation. Um, in fact, I think they have almost all the bases covered in terms of different forms of energy. So they're highly, highly diversified across these technologies in terms of generation. And personally, that's very important to me. I don't know what the future is going to be uh, for energy and power generation. I think that there is potential for disruptive technologies to come into this space. And I think Capital Power has done a really awesome job of sort of spreading uh, their investment across a lot of different technologies. I think they're also into some really cool uh, renewable energy resources. And so again, I don't know exactly where renewables is going to go, um, but these guys are well positioned no matter where it goes. So if there's sudden economies of scale to be had in waste heat generation, for example, they're really well positioned to take advantage of it, and they're small enough to move quickly. Um, so I think they're a fantastic company, and I'm really happy to have them in my portfolio. Now, the other one I own is Canadian Utilities. Uh, you know, these guys, it's, it's an even more boring business, like I say, but I own them for the numbers. Um, and, and I like that yield. If the yield here was just a little bit higher on Atco, I would probably own these guys. Now that said, none of the companies in this list are certainly bad buys. I owned Algonquin for a while and you know it didn't have the price appreciation I was looking for, but still a solid company. And so I'd like to address something else about utilities. You know, we saw some really impressive performance in that back test, but I'm gonna give you a word of caution in that back test. If you think about the last couple of decades, well, I guess more so the last decade in particular, that was a period of declining interest rates. It was also a period of very, very low inflation. So both of those things are super friendly to utilities because what happens is there are a lot of very, very conservative investors that if interest rates were high, they would be putting their money into uh, treasury bills, GICs, high interest savings accounts, wherever they could get a good yield on fixed income. So as interest rates decline, that's not the case. These folks can't make the income they need at a fixed income. And so there's more and more pressure to push them into equities. And they don't like this, right? They, do, they don't really want to take on the risk of equities. So when they're forced out of that fixed income and into an equity position, they're going to look for the most conservative investment they can possibly find, and that's going to be utilities, right? So that pushes up the share price of utility stocks while interest rates are declining. Right? So I think that is, uh, goes a large way towards explaining that period of outperformance, certainly in the last decade. And I think go forward, you have to be concerned about the potential for interest rates to rise and what that might do to that utility sector. Now, that said, it doesn't happen overnight. I think you have to see a long sustained rise in interest rates before there's gonna be any meaningful impact to those utility stocks. So I think once you start to see that happening, which to my mind could happen within the next three years time frame if interest rates do start to climb, it might make sense to start to rebalance your portfolio, probably to underweight utilities a little bit and maybe shift your money somewhere else. So I hope that's a meaningful way to look at the overall sector. I think within that, you can probably find stocks that fit your own investment goals and would fit into your own dividend portfolio. So if this helps, please like the video, uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already, ring the bell, and I'll see you in the next one.